we both love corn. And yeah. uh, I saw in the presentation today that we, we shared to, to me a very nice and very detailed cost analysis for each input, for each, uh, let's say, population density, how many cups you need in order to, to reach an average uh, yield. Would you be so kind to share with us part of the, let's say, management of the risk in the corn and how you are budgeting, how you are choosing the, the hybrids, how do you, you are choosing the, the right population and here, how the important is the technology, varied uh, uh, population rate? Uh. That's a huge question. We, um, as I said, look at response curves and what's the response curve for nitrogen application in corn and when you use it. So, and we look at how many plants do we need. You know, I have a lot of seed companies coming to me saying you need to seed 75,000 seeds. The reality is to harvest 11.5 tons of corn, you need 64,000 cobs at harvest time. You need 16 rows, you need 35 grains per row, and you need 300, 320 grams, 1,000 grain weight. You don't need 75,000, 3 and a half tons. I'm not trying to grow 11 and a half tons. I want, we want to try and bring our, bring our business that we will average 8.5 to 9 tonnes year after year. We're giving up second corns, we're growing more cover crops, we're growing more soybean, we're growing more of our, wheat, our corn after wheat. But what we're seeing is that we, two years ago we started on a project with Syngenta on variable rate seeding and in the 2020 year we, we got a huge amount of information. In the very dry year of 2020, we saw that in the very good parts of the fields, 75,000 ears paid very well. But when you came down to 55 and 60 in the poor parts of the field, it was by far and away the best yield. And you saved 20,000 seeds as well, which is a lot of money. Yeah. And so this year, all our corn will be variable rate seeded. And thanks to the Vadastad seeders, this is very easy to do, particularly with the young, young men like Andre and you know. Uh, uh, on our northern zone farms who are brilliant with this technology, we will be seeding between 55 and 75,000. The poorer part of the field will be down to 55,000 and the good parts of the field will be up to 75. And we hope to flatten out the yield. And, and there's some great work out of the American universities that in the water restricted areas, which we are, we're under 550 millimetres of water restricted area, we need to keep the plant, plant count down. And so we won't actually be planting, you know, 75,000 and all the fields of 72,000 will be between 55,000 and 75,000. And I would say to you, if your land is not as good, cut the, cut the seed rate, cut the seed rate. But go for flex ears. Don't go for fixed rows. You know, there's, there's some varieties, there's one particular variety from Genta that we grow a lot of because in poor areas, it'll put on 14 rows. And in really good areas of good ground conditions, but 20 rows. And so it'll adapt itself to the season. And so if you get the rainfall and you have this flexible rows yeah. and go to 20 rows, away you go. And if you've bad and you go to 14 rows, that's great. And, and the other thing we're looking at in poor areas is only growing six tons of corn, but it's an awful lot better than four tons of wheat. Yeah. You know, we're, we don't have this, you know, you know, guys come to send me all this fancy genetics and said, no, give me the price because I'm not, I'm not trying to grow 14 tonnes of corn because I'm not irrigated, but I would like to harvest across a lot of hectares of corn, 8.5 tonnes to 9 tonnes, year in, year out. That's what yes, I would love to do. Yes, because the average make the difference, not the, the <laughs> let's say, the top yield. Well, Liam, our son, is our finance guy, and as he says, it's the average pays the bills. Tell me how you are managing the workforce in your farm, because uh, uh, it's a long discussion here. Uh, less and less people are willing to work in the agriculture. And in order to put in place that you are doing now with a lot of at least three tablet in, in your tractor, you need a very good operator in order to, 
variable dose rate and so on. How do you 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 see the from this perspective of workforce the 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 future of us? The future is on providing really good employment conditions for people. It is so important to realize, to realize that good people need to be adva- able to advance and do well, to have good secure jobs, to have a very good income. And, and so we spend a lot of time on this. We don't get it right all the time, but our good people, we try to look after them very, very well. For instance, we collect all our people from the, the, our tractor drivers. They don't have to have a car. We have two mini buses. We now have regionalized the business because we're spread out over nearly 100 kilometers. So we're, we've tr- divided the business into three regions that the drivers aren't too far from home, that when they finish their shift, they're near home. They not then have to drive 50 kilometers. The last week we were seeding sugar beet. So we pushed on. So as we were finished f- Friday, so as we didn't have to work Saturday and Sunday. We're seeding soybeans this week, which is unusual, but we seed mm. the soybeans very early. And we certainly hope on Saturday to convert all the machines to be finished soya and convert the machines for corn and take Sunday off and start into the, cor- into the corn Monday morning and maybe start on Saturday that we are actually set up and running for the next week. And then we will probably work the following weekend because it's the height of the corn season. If we can seed all our corn in that nine, ten days, it would be great. And then we can close for Easter and then we'll seed the sunflower.